In this video, we're going to focus on evaluating the definite integral. But first, what is the difference between an indefinite integral and the definite integral? So on the left, I have an indefinite integral. And on the right, I have a definite integral. The difference is a definite integral contain the lower limit a and the upper limit b. Those are known as the limits of integration. The indefinite integral doesn't have it. Now once you integrate the indefinite integral, it's going to give you a function in terms of x based on this example. So this will give you the antiderivative of lowercase f, which is capital F, plus c. When you integrate the definite integral, you're going to get a number, maybe like 25 or something. So it gives you a specific value. f of x is known as the integrand. dx is the variable of integration. And this is the integral sign, which represents a limit of sums. Now you need to be familiar with the fundamental theorem of calculus part two and it's associated with definite integrals basically the definite integral of f from a to b is equal to f of b minus f of a where capital f is the antiderivative of lowercase f now this symbol if you see it is the same as f of b minus f of a. So let's go ahead and apply FTC part two, the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate definite integrals. So let's start with a simple problem. Let's evaluate eight dx from two to five. So first we need to find the antiderivative of eight. The antiderivative of 8 is 8x, because the derivative of 8x is 8. And we're going to evaluate it from 2 to 5. So first, let's replace x with 5. This represents f of b, or basically f of 5. And then we're going to replace x with 2. So this is the f of a part. Now, 8 times 5 is 40 and 8 times 2 is 16, 40 minus 16 is 24. So the final answer of any definite integral is a number. And that's it for the first example. Now let's try another problem. Go ahead and evaluate this particular definite integral. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. So first, let's find the antiderivative of 5x minus 4. So you need to use the power rule. The antiderivative of x raised to the n is x raised to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Now, anytime you have an indefinite integral, you're going to get some constant c. When you have a definite integral, you don't need the constant of integration. It's going to cancel. So the antiderivative of 5x is going to be 5x squared divided by 2. And for negative 4, it's going to be negative 4x. Now, let's see what would happen if we add c, which we really don't need to, but let's just see what's going to happen. So first, we need to calculate f of b. So we need to plug in 4 into this entire expression. So it's going to be 5 times 4 squared divided by 2 minus 4x, or 4 times 4, plus c. And then minus, now f of a, so we got to plug in 1 this time. So it's going to be 5 times 1 squared over 2 minus 4 times 1 plus c. Now you can see why c is about to cancel. It doesn't have an x variable attached to it. Four squared is 16. 16 divided by two is eight. Eight times five is 40. Four times four is 16. And then on the right side, we have one squared times five over two. So that's five over two. And don't forget to distribute the negative sign to everything on the right. And then we have negative 4 times 1, that's negative 4, 
times the negative sign, so that's going to be positive 4. And then we're going to have negative c. So c and negative c will cancel. That's why it's not needed. 40 minus 16, that's going to be 24. And 24 plus 4 is 28. Now 5 over 2, I can break that into 4 over 2 minus a half because negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I have 28 minus 2, which is 26. And so I have 26 minus a half. So as a mixed number, that's going to be 25 and 1 half, or 25.5. As an improper fraction, it's going to be 25 times 2, which is 50, plus 1 and keep the denominator the same, so it's going to be 51 over 2. So this is the final answer for this problem. Let's work on this one. Go ahead and integrate this function from negative 3 to 4. So the first thing we need to do is rewrite the expression. So let's take the x variable and move it to the top before we integrate it. So we have 8x to the negative 3 dx. So now let's find the antiderivative of this expression using a power rule. So negative 3 plus 1, that's going to be negative 2. And then we need to divide by it. And then let's evaluate this from negative 3 to 4. But before we do that, let's simplify and rewrite this expression. So 8 divided by negative 2, that's going to be negative 4. And then we could take the x variable and move it back to the bottom. So it's going to change from x raised to the negative 2 to x raised to the positive 2. And so now we can plug in 4 and 3. So let's start with the top one, the upper limit. So it's going to be negative 4 over 4 squared. So that's f of b. And then minus f of a, it's going to be negative 4 over negative 3 squared. So negative 4 over 4 squared, we can cancel a 4. So we're left with negative 1 over 4. On the right side, these two negative signs will cancel. And so that's going to be positive 4 on top. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. So now we'll need to add these two fractions. So what we need to do is get common denominators. So a common denominator between 4 and 9 is going to be 36. So we're going to multiply the second fraction by 4 over 4 and the first one by 9 over 9. So this is going to be negative 9 over 36 plus 16 over 36. 16 minus 9 is 7. So the final answer is 7 divided by 36. And that's the answer. Try this example. Evaluate the definite integral from 1 to e of 5 divided by x dx. So first, let's rewrite it as 5 and times 1 over x. I'm going to move the constant to the front. Now, what is the antiderivative of 1 over x dx? If you recall, that's ln x. So what we have is 5 times ln x evaluated from 1 to e. So f of b is going to be 5 ln e, and then minus f of a, which is 5 ln 1. Now you need to know that the natural log of e is 1, and the natural log of 1 is 0. So the final answer is simply 5. And that's it for this problem. It's not too difficult. Let's try one more problem. Let's find the value of this definite integral. Go ahead and try this. So first, we need to rewrite the expression. The square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. Next, we need to move x to the top. So this is going to be x raised to the negative 1 half. And now we can use the power rule. So negative 1 half plus 1, that's going to be positive 1 half. Now, 
and then we need to divide by 1 half. But if you multiply the top and bottom by 2, 2 times a half is 1. So this whole expression becomes 2x to the 1 half, evaluated from 4 to 9. And then we can convert it back into the square root symbol. So f of b is going to be 2 times the square root of 9 minus f of a, which is 2 times the square root of 4. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, 6 minus 4 is 2. And that's the final answer.